Welcome everyone. So today we're in the first module. We're talking about um, what systems mapping is and why it's uh, important. Um, so systems mapping is a type of systems analysis. Uh, we're trying to gain a, an empirical understanding of the system. Um, so let's just start with the idea of a system because uh, that's very important. So what is a system? A system is a whole that's composed of a set of parts and we call these parts elements and in systems analysis and systems mapping um, we're trying to understand this system and the parts and how the parts are interrelated All right so that's everything we're going to be doing in systems mapping in systems analysis um, understanding uh, the elements how they're interrelated um, and the structure of those relationships um, that forms the whole system so this system, it could be a transport system, it could be you know, a family, a business, um, it could be a biological cell or an ecosystem. Um, so many different types of systems. Um, and here we're just trying to understand them, um, model them is really what we're trying to do. Um, and ultimately understand this set of relationships between the elements and that structure of the system. So systems mapping is there to reveal the underlining uh, structure of a system. And um, it's a way of trying to visually represent that. So we're trying to get um, out of our own subjective understanding of what the system is and represent it visually out there in the world. And this is best done in a group of people so that they can come to some understanding of what this system looks like, a shared understanding. The construction of the map um, is a process for them to go through um, to understand to collectively make sense of the system and collectively uh, try and represent it and negotiate their understandings of what this system looks like. And then ultimately for us to have a shared um, visual, visual representation um, of the elements, the relationships and the structure of that system um, from which we'd then be able to go and do things, um, for example, intervene in some way, create, uh, see if there are kind of missing connections or what's going on where, um, and this is the foundations for people to start to work together um, towards changing systems. So that's a system. We'll look now at um, some examples of a systems map, and that's what we're always doing. We're always um, representing a system, which is a set of elements and relationships between those elements. Um, let's jump in to take a look at a couple uh, of examples of systems maps um, here. So this is a systems map. Um, it's a representation um, of a system, as we just talked about, and we can see the elements and we can see the relationships uh, between them. This is a map of uh, students and particularly of um, the issue of student depression and suicide in India, which is uh, a big one. Um, so they're focusing on, on, on the students and all the elements that are affecting the students' um, level of mental well-being and um, depression and so forth. Uh, so you can see in the center there, they put the students and then around that they put um, other elements, the parents, the friends, student body, faculty, so on and so forth. Um, around those, they put more elements, kind of secondary uh, factors that are affecting those primary ones, affecting the students ultimately, uh, community, NGOs, media, so on and so forth. And uh, so on, there's the third circle there with government agencies and so forth. But then we can see that they're interrelated, right? We've got those connections between them. And uh, we can see arrows uh, saying what's, what's affecting what. Uh, we can see campus um, counselors are obviously affecting students. Administration is affecting faculty. Faculty is affecting um, students. Students are affected by their friends and in turn um, are affecting their friends. Um, Community is affecting NGOs, which is affecting student, which is related to student body, which ties back to, to students. So this is a system um, and we can see there the basic elements. This is always what we're doing of the um, different factors that are affecting that are part of this system, uh, which are the elements and the interrelationships um, between them. So just that much. Just doing that before we do anything more advanced, um, putting the elements up in the relationships can be very, very um, effective and useful for us to um, represent what we're doing and um, develop a visual representation, a shared understanding of it. So that's really the core of systems mapping, um, doing that basic mapping there. Okay, so let's look at another one just so we get an idea. 
This is um, the industrial cup of tea and how it's made. So it's looking at a, a socio-technical um, system uh, that also has environmental factors and economic factors and so forth. And it's a, it's a huge complex system. Uh, but again, we can see um, the basic components of what we're talking about in the map, the elements. Um, there are elements like the natural resources that are being inputted here, water, forest, um, oil, transport, you know, the factories, uh, water treatment, tea bags, so on and so forth. And then the interrelationships between them, right? So the forestry is going, uh, trees are coming from the forest and the, the, the trees are going into the factory and then the factory is producing the packaging, which is going to the tea wrapping. Um, tea bags are, um, or tea is obviously related to tea bags, which is uh, going to this cup of tea, um, so on and so forth. So that's another example of a map um, of a complex system, uh, all the parts and their interrelationships. And that's what we're doing. Uh, when we're doing systems mapping. Here's another one uh, of poverty and the elements uh, called the ecosystem of poverty, um, the elements that are affecting poverty. So we put poverty in the center there. Uh, it's the thing we're interested in. And then what are the elements? Uh, you can see they put up lack of capital, um, urban migration, deforestation, lack of income, lack of healthcare. Um, these are things that are all related to poverty. Actually, going out on the left-hand side of the graphic, you can see if we are poor, if we're in a state of poverty, this will lead to uh, those things, lack of capital, which then is linked to a lack of opportunities, which is linked to um, farm failure. This is particularly, I think, about rural communities in, in developing economies. Uh, and that comes all the way back to employment, lack of income, lack of income is feeding into poverty. Um, so we, again, we can they constructed a systems map. They went out and they researched this um, issue of poverty. And they figured out what are the most important elements and they posted them up there, uh, like we'll be doing uh, through this course. And then they asked, how are they interrelated? What's leading to what? Um, what's the structure of that system? And they posted it up and this has given them uh, a, a good understanding or a better understanding of that system and the set of interrelationships. And that's what we're dealing with uh, in systems mapping. 